sometimes even monsters fall. Hey, what's up? B Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I'll be reviewing your Mushi Pedal Grand Road episode 21. If you haven't watched the episode yet, I highly recommend you do so by following the link in the description below and coming back to this video when you're done. With that being said, let's head into the review. <laughs> So this episode continues the battle between Nido Suji and Imozumi and it was pretty freaking amazing. We can see how Nido Suji kept going back and forth with Imozumi just trying to get in there every time like literally he was trying to get his head in between those two walls. That that didn't sound right. But <laughs> we saw how he tried to use his head to push Imazumi away from the guard waiter and try to get any possible space he could. And we saw just how intense this battle was. Now, I've stated in past reviews so many times how Imazumi's character has developed to unfathomable, like, proportions. Like, if this was day one, Imazumi would have blown... I mean, Mirosuji would have blown Imazumi away, like he did in day one and in day two. However... Imazumi has grown and does not let Mirosuji get to him. However, there was one thing that got to Imazumi and his bike is what got to him. We saw how his bike cracked. The actual frame right next to where he puts his water bottle cracked. And that's not very good because that can lead to his bike breaking completely. But besides that, it also doesn't allow the power to transfer all the way to his front tire, which in turn makes him a lot slower in comparison to other competitors that don't have a broken bike. And Mirosuji saw that and tried to take advantage of that. But as soon as he tried to take advantage of that, his left leg just completely died on him. I don't know if he pulled a muscle or if he got a cramp. I don't think they said it, but his left leg was just done. And he really couldn't even use it anymore and that's that's surprising to see Mirosuji go down but if you start to think about it he had to go down at some point I mean we know Mirosuji is a monster but just how much of a monster is he like I said sometimes monsters have to fall and after all the things Mirosuji has definitely pushed himself more than any other competitor in this inter high there's no doubting that day one he pushed himself to tie with the two aces. Day two, he pushed himself to take the mountain stage, the sprinting stage, and almost take the W from the aces. And day three, when it was only him and Isigaki, they caught back up to the front of the pack. Now, that's pretty incredible. And Miguel Suji is a great character and a great competitor. However, it seemed that his body could not keep up with him. And it was pretty sad to see him go, especially with the flashbacks of him thinking of his mother in the hospital and the yellow sky and the things that Ishigaki said to him. It was really heart-wrenching and eventually Mirosuji fell. And when he fell, it was kind of funny. Like, not that falling is funny, although it can be at some times. When you saw him laying down on the floor, he looked like a freaking lizard. Just spread out his long limbs just on the floor and the spectators just looking at him like if he was some sort of wild animal. I thought that was hilarious. I don't know if I was the only one that saw that. But besides that, the cliffhanger at the end of this episode is just insane. After one battle ends, Imazumi versus Mirosuji with Imazumi in the top, finally beating Mirosuji after so many losses, it's not over for, Mido, uh, for Imazumi. As we saw, Manami and Fukutomi just come out of nowhere with a gust of wind and are right behind Imazumi, and just like that, the episode is over. So now, Imazumi is going to have to try to fend off Manami, one of the greatest mountain climbers in this race, and Fukutomi, one of the strongest racers in this race, the winner of the past Inter High, the ace of the kings of this mountain, which is going to be pretty difficult. I don't know if Imazumi is going to be able to do it, especially with a broken frame in his bike. And after 
that just after defeating Mido Suji as well, it's going to be pretty difficult. However, we now have a 2v2 situation between Hakane's Academy, Manami, and Fukutomi, and Sohoku's Imaizumi and Onoda. But we don't know where Onoda is. Earlier in the episode, we saw that he was just trying his best to keep up with um, Imaizumi and Mido Suji, and actually Hakane Academy was nowhere to be found at that point and then we just kind of went over to which I thought was a pretty comedic break to Onoda's mom and Manami's classmate just discussing what road racing is and then we see how Onoda's mom is kind of clueless about everything like we've seen in past episodes but she was able to catch on to Manami's classmate and neighbor having a crush on Manami so her character is kind of weird uh, she's clueless about everything besides love, apparently. I, I don't even know. But, yeah, next episode is gonna be pretty darn hype. Um, I'm honestly wondering, where the heck is our main character, Onoda? He is the main character of this anime, and it seems the focus has kind of shifted over to Imaizumi. Not saying I don't like Imaizumi, but... Onoda is the main character, and we've kind of been missing out on him for a while. And especially at the end of this episode, he's... Nowhere to be found, but like always, we know that Onoda is his best at catching up, and he is in the best possible situation to do that. Three people in front of him, the finish line only 2,700 kilometers away. Things are about to get crazy in this episode. Overall, I thought it was really freaking good. MVP in this episode goes to Mido Suji. I like how the creators were finally able to humanize a character that seemed like a monster throughout the whole anime and it sucks to see him go but all in all this was this was freaking great anyways i'll see you guys in the next review thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and welcome to the operation